All right, so um, I put together a talk today. Um, this is my semi-annual nerves talk that I've been allotted, I think. Um, so I, I talked here several months ago about where nerves was at, and I think that was around the time when bakeware was coming out. So I was showing uh, how bakeware made things easier, and now I want to show you how things are even easier than that. Uh, it's pretty amazing. So I've titled the talks, talk Mixed Up With Nerves uh, because we're using mix now instead of bakeware. And then uh, I also wanted to talk about my journey uh, joining the project and contributing to NERVS because I feel like there's, some, there's a lot of discussion these days about non-code contribution to projects. And I feel like a lot of my contribution to the project has been non-code and I wanted to talk about that a little bit because uh, it's rare to hear specifics about what that actually means. Um, again, thanks to Gaslight for the pizza and the venue. Uh, it's a great place to be. Uh, here's my overview for my talk. I just want to give an intro to NERVS uh, a little bit more quickly than last time probably because I've already talked about it a little bit in the videos online. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about what's new and what's next because that's the main thing that I'm, that I'm focusing on today. And then like I mentioned, my journey and then uh, a community update of where NERVS is at. So the tagline for NERVS is craft and deploy bulletproof embedded software in Elixir. Um, that's a recent change, I forget what it used to be, but really the focus here is on you know, crafting and deploying, gives this feel of really doing a good job instead of hacking something together. Uh, and then the bulletproof embedded software is self-explanatory, and then Elixir is the programming language that people want to use today for uh, programming their embedded devices. So this is what that looks like when you put an, uh, Elixir on an embedded device. <laughs> um, I used this slide before. Uh, when you think about uh, Elixir running on an embedded device, that's, that's exciting because we like Elixir, but when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because Elixir is built on, on Beam, um, which is the Erlang VM designed to run on embedded systems back in the day. Um, it gives you some fault tolerance, um, fast garbage collection due to being per process uh, in Erlang, uh, good concurrency, and it works on constrained hardware, uh, supports binary protocols, and lots of other things. This is also kind of an old slide, uh, so some of the names are not accurate anymore, uh, but the, the idea stands that NERVS is about infrastructure tooling and libraries to give you the whole thing that you're going to need to do embedded platform. So yeah, some of the names are different now. NERVS build root is now just NERVS. Uh, FWUP is the firmware updating and creation program. And then Erl init is this interesting little uh, Linux init binary that is written in Erlang to run, or it's not written in Erlang, but it runs Erlang as your init, as your init system instead of using like uh, system D or something like that on Linux. Um, this is a quick chart about why you might choose NERVS instead of something like Raspbian, which the Raspberry Pi people distribute with the Raspberry Pi. So it boots 10 times faster, the firmware image is a lot smaller, it has a better update strategy. If you have an embedded system, you probably don't want to have to distribute two gigabyte updates to people, um, so a few megabytes would be much better. And then failback strategy is about if you do an update and then somebody unplugs it halfway through, because that's what customers do, uh, it can still boot on the B partition that's still, you know, correct. Uh, and then unplugability is about if you pull the plug while you're using the system, because again, that's what customers do, uh, it doesn't corrupt the file system because it's read-only. Uh, there's a data partition that you can write to, but the main important one you can't write to. So today there's support for a lot of boards. On the top is all the Raspberry Pis, and then you have BeagleBone Black, uh, Intel uh, Galileo, and Lego EV3. So I think that Edison that you're passing around is similar to Galileo, but I don't think it's the same. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I heard that somebody was trying to get Edison to work with NERVS and there's enough differences that it's hard and Intel's a big company so it's hard to get details from them on it. Okay, so what's new and what's next? Um, one of the great things that's new is Wi-Fi support. Uh, so right now it works and it's there but you have to do some shelling out and stuff so it's not amazing yet. It's, we call it interim support but it does work with some uh, Wi-Fi hardware. Bakeware's been replaced by native mix integration, and that's the main meat of the talk that I want to talk a little bit more about. Um, this is a graph that I showed last time about the bad old days when you had um, NERVS configuration telling Buildroot what to do. 
and it was bad because it took a really long time for the build root part of it to basically build Linux from scratch, compile everything for the target that you wanted to run it on, uh, and then build all your dependencies and, your, and, and then your actual app code on top of that. Uh, it also required Linux, which is a shortcoming. So then an improvement last time was um, the bake tool made that a lot easier because the slow part happened in the cloud uh, and it was, it was magic and fairies and stuff and then you have systems and tool chains that you don't have to understand and then you just run your app code through and it's pretty quick. Um, so today, the nice thing is that instead of bake there, it's just mix. Um, the stuff still happens in the cloud a little bit to some extent, but now the, the magic has been revealed a little bit and you can actually dig in and see how it works because it's all just mixed now. There's no special, you know, Ruby script or something that does part of it. Um, so with the new mix integration, you don't have to install Bakeware anymore. It's just a mix archive like Phoenix. So uh, we have this magic URL. Uh, you do a mix archive.install and it, it installs and then you get uh, nerves new like you would see for Phoenix. And that does what you would expect. It generates you a, a skeleton project uh, targeting Raspberry Pi 3 in this case. Um, but you can target whatever platform you want. And then after you've generated it, you can change the target at build time. So you can support multiple platforms if you want to. Um, and then building with mix, this is a little bit uh, anticlimactic because basically it's just mix depths.get like you would normally do for a, a mix project. And then the special sauce is mix firmware, um, which I believe is just built into mix now, um, but Nerves is, was the first customer of that command. Um, and then firmware.burn is what actually burns the image to the SD card. I wanted to, since this is a technical talk, I wanted to go into a little bit of detail. So how does that magic actually work and peel the covers off a little bit? Um, this is what gets generated when you do a, uh, a nerves.new. Um, the important part here is that, I forget what this is called, is this a module attribute or something? Yeah. So um, this is a, a regular old Elixir concept, it's not anything special. Um, it just sets target equal to either the environment variable nerves target or um, rpy3 for Raspberry Pi 3. And that's just what you generated it as because you had to pick something. Um, otherwise, you might have a problem if it didn't have a target set at all. It might be worth mentioning that the system get in there will happen in compile time. So yeah. if you're compiling on this target, it's going to be whatever from whatever machine you target, which is fine. I think a lot of people will do this on Phoenix projects and then deploy to Right, yeah. Yeah, this, so I guess probably all of Mix, right, happens at compile time. Um, so you have to be careful that the environment you're talking about is your, your build time environment, which in our case it is because you're going to set this basically, this nerves target, you're going to set that on the command line when you're compiling. You want to tell it, my nerves target is Raspberry Pi 0 or 3 or, you know, whatever. Um, and, then, and then Mix firmware is part of the same line. So once this target attribute is set, uh, it gets injected into the um, into the project settings here so that the compilers can use it later on. And then um, you just add on, you concatenate the system dependency for that target. And all that does is just this this function right here is going to put that target in here. And then this nerve system rpy3 is going to be a hex package that it goes and downloads. So like I said, there's not any magic here. It's just, you know, there's a hex package called that. And that's how that works. Um, I think one of the other changes to Mix that needed to happen for this to happen um, was in the alias, I think alias has already existed, but the pre-compile step didn't exist before, maybe? Not sure if that's true. So, so nerves alias is pre-compile to nerves.precompile and then your regular depths.precompile, and that's where it shoehorns in setting up all your cross-compilers and stuff, um, which is a whole deep voodoo that probably nobody really needs to worry about. <laughs> The problem is solved. Um, so then this is what is inside the mix.exs file for that uh, hex package I was talking about. This is the rpy3 nerve system. And then I cut out a bunch of stuff, but basically all it does is add a mix compiler for nerve systems. So any nerve system is going to have a nerve system compiler, and it knows how to do the cross compiling. And then this is where the system specifies what tool chain it wants to have. And that ridiculously long name is, again, another hex package uh, for that particular tool chain uh, that knows how to compile itself. 
and then I, I shortened it here, but this is the mix file that's inside that hex package, uh, and it does the same thing, except instead of nerve system, it's a nerves tool, tool chain compiler. Um, and all that just to say, eventually the environment gets populated with this tool chain tuple, and that is what ultimately tells the compiler, here's how I want to build my thing. Um, and that's how cross compilers work, as you tell it, that's what I want to compile for, even though I'm running on, you know, Windows or Mac OS or whatever. Um, this is what my Raspberry Pi runs, so that's what I want to compile my code for. Um, I didn't want to describe, like, how the actual compilers work, but there is a thing where, just like in the bakeware days, you can either use a cached pre-compiled uh, system and tool chain, or you can build it yourself. And that's just, again, another environment variable, but all the stuff to build them is in here. The cached ones have just been pre-built by the team and put on S3 or wherever they're at um, so that you don't have to do it yourself. So if you don't trust nerves, uh, as you probably shouldn't, you know, as a team, because you should build it yourself, Richard Stallman would be happy. Uh, you can do that. So another, uh, another big change is that the docs have been moved to hex docs. Um, that kind of came along with the mix integration because now that it's, now that everything's a mix package, it's a lot easier to just stick the documentation in the mix package and then publish it to hex docs uh, along with each package. Um, the main ones are here just under the nerves heading. Uh, and that's where you would go to get started with the project. Um, another new feature that people have been asking for is Phoenix support. And there's a guide online about how to use Phoenix for an embedded UI, which is pretty cool because instead of, you know, I don't know what you would do, I guess compile C code or something to like build a, a, a UI into your product, you can use Phoenix and use web technologies that you're already familiar with and then either connect to it remotely over, um, over like port 80 or whatever. Um, or you can, uh, in the future, you're gonna be able to actually display the Phoenix app on a screen that's attached to the device. That part's not quite working yet because there's not a way right now to run a browser easily uh, at boot up time like that. It's all, it's mostly headless normally. So you'd have to get a graphical environment going. So coming soon is uh, better Wi-Fi support. Like I was mentioning, you have to shell out a lot to, to different Linux commands to get stuff working, even though it does work. Uh, it would be better if it was more automatic with some um, discovery features. And we're looking at, um, I'm blanking on what the thing is that just came out in Elixir 131 or something. Um, uh, it's something with events. Is it, it's not just gen event, is it? It's something else. Some new thing yes. just came out. Um, it's like brand new. Yeah, it's some kind of some kind of eventing system that just came out uh, as a as an OTP thing. Yeah, so it's it's a replacement for Gen Event. Um, maybe we'll fill in the blank later. But so we're looking at pro probably using PubSub. No, it's it's some kind of OTP feature. It's a Gen something. I forget what it is. Yeah, I'll look it up and get back to you. But um, we're looking at probably experimenting with that over the next week or two um, and seeing if we can build something around that. Another thing that's coming soon is support for this Linkit Smart board. Uh, it's a pretty cool board. It has Wi-Fi built into it, which is a nice feature these days for one of these um, cheaper boards. Uh, that's going to be the target board for some of the upcoming trainings, so we're really focused on having that work. Um, and then another thing that's, that's been out there but not really finalized for a long time is uh, over the network firmware updates with Failback, and that's based on the Cellulose project. Um, so Garth Hitchens and, and Chris Dutton have been working on that, but it's basically uh, taking their internally developed tool and open sourcing it, making it available, and integrating it well into NERVs. Um, so that'll allow you to do like, you know, discover your node on the network, push a firmware to it, and then make sure it worked. Um, and, and fail back if it didn't work. And then also coming soon is Windows support. Uh, I've been personally working a lot on that to get uh, FW up, first of all, working on Windows um, because, yeah, so currently if you're on Windows and you want to burn an SD card, you go download this binary from SourceForge and that's how people do it. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> so we're trying to get, trying to get FW up, uh, first class support on Windows, coming as soon as we can. Um, and that'll also help with trainings and stuff because people are going to show up to trainings with Windows machines and we got to have some story for that. Uh, and that's a duplicate slide. So a little bit about my journey to the project. 
Um, I started with an interest in Elixir, thanks to James here, and um, just started coming to these meetups and, and learning a little bit about Elixir. And then um, I have some, some past experience with embedded hardware. Uh, that box in the middle there is, a, um, is an electronics box that goes on a rocket that I've worked on at work. Um, and then I had a dusty Raspberry Pi sitting around that I bought years ago and had never even like, used other than just turning it on. So I was like, you know what? I saw this talk by Garth Hitchens, uh, Elixir Conf, Conf 20, 2015, and it sounded like, wow, this nurse thing is really cool. Why is nobody using that? Um, so I started looking into it, and uh, I tried it, and I struggled a lot, and I got Hello World, and I, you know, I had this IEX prompt running on my Raspberry Pi in like three and a half seconds. That was pretty sweet. So I wanted to get involved, uh, even though I was pretty new to Elixir at the time. I guess I'm still pretty new to Elixir, but I think we all are. Um, and I want to say, especially because I was new to Elixir, I, th I said, you know, as a new Elixirist or alchemist or whatever we call ourselves, um, I, f I thought I could bring a new perspective to the project. Like if somebody's coming in totally fresh, like I know they're going to and they, and they have, um, they're not going to know even what a mix file is. So I thought, you know, somebody that doesn't know what a mix file is should be writing the docs for this project. <clears throat> so I started to work on these NeoPixels uh, from Adafruit. Um, and I, I was mainly just doing it because I needed some kind of a fun project to keep myself motivated and then also to learn nerves a little bit. Um, I ended up publishing a library for that. So that's, that's the NeoPixel library for nerves, I guess, or Elixir probably. Um, and then I decided to join the nerves core team. Um, initially, it was because I was, I was going to help on the on, on hardware CI system, continuous integration system. And I thought I might be able to help out there because I kind of understand how hardware works and I've, I've heard of CI, so, you know, what else do you need? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, person number five on the team. Uh, if, it, if it's bothering anybody that there's only one person in the second row there, that kind of like gets on my OCD nerves a little bit. So all you have to do is join the team and you can fix that problem. <laughs> um, my, my free time tends to be pretty limited and fragmented to like basically only late at night. Um, so. I thought I should focus on learning and teaching because those are things that you can do kind of in an hour here and there. Um, so I focused on website updates, um, documentation and guides, and then speaking at local meetup groups like this. So that's, that's where I did a lot of my early contribution. Um, and then I kind of decided, you know what, I'm just going to be a community manager, right? I don't know what that means, but I'm going to do it. Um, we didn't really have anybody that was like welcoming new people into the Slack channel, so I decided everybody that joins the Slack channel, I'm going to say welcome and ask them if they have any questions or, you know. So I see some thumbs up back there. Um, I feel like that's a pretty important, it's a pretty important project role for an open source project, and uh, I don't see it mentioned a lot, so I'm mentioning it. Um, I, I do a lot of answering questions and, and just trying to, like, you know, if somebody has a problem and they can't get something working, I usually don't know the answer, but I'll at least try to work through it with them and get more information. Um, and then also improve the readmes if I, if I notice myself or if I hear somebody else uh, complaining that something doesn't make sense or doesn't work, I try to work through fixing it. Um, maintaining the, web, the website is kind of one of those drudgery tasks that, you know, doesn't get a lot of limelight, but it's an important thing to do. Um, just triaging issues and PRs on GitHub, uh, especially now with the mix integration. I didn't count how many repositories, but it's probably like two dozen different repositories that might have an issue on them or something. Um, and then thinking a little bit about the roadmap of the project, because um, everybody wants to work on their bright, shiny thing, right? Nobody's getting paid except Justin <laughs> for, for nerves, right? <laughs> so, um, but nobody's really like, you know, working at a company that's, that's building nerves. It's all whatever somebody wants to work on. So trying to think about roadmap and where we're going. Um, so then community update. Uh, I'm trolling a little bit here. So. The red line there actually isn't nerves. Uh, it, it is a hockey stick, though, so that makes it look good. Um, I did a Google Trends thing, and um, the red line is uh, Elixir Phoenix, right? So Phoenix is very popular these days. Uh, the blue line at the bottom is Elixir nerves. So, you know, it, it's going up, too. Yeah. I don't think Google Trends will let you do just one thing. Well, maybe it will. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've also noticed recently that NERVS tends to be mentioned along with things like Phoenix and Ecto and even Rails, like uh, on the Elixir fountain and whatnot. You know, you hear, you know, if you want to look into like Rails or Phoenix or whatever and NERVS, you know, it's like it, it just it tends to be tacked onto the end of the sentence more and more often, and that's encouraging that the project really is getting a lot of traction and attention. 
Um, there's over 500 people on the Slack channel right now. Seems like a lot of people. Uh, as I mentioned, Justin's working full, nearly full time on nerves. <gasps> what? what? We hadn't heard. Um, so that's, that's exciting news because that, that, that says that there's at least one company that's really you know, buying into this and saying this is the future of what we want to do and um, we're going to put some money towards it. I also see another name there. I don't, I don't recognize Lance uh, Al Lance Alverson. Is, uh, he's in charge of the Phoenix guys. Okay. Oh, oh, he was on the fountain, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so I don't know Lance, but he seems like a great guy, and I'm happy to hear that they're working on it. So wait, is that, where is he? Um, this is the company name, Latote. I looked it up, I forget what they, what they do. They're, they're like a product company, though. Lance went there. Okay, so Lance was an added GoPro. I was excited for a second because I thought, wait a second, GoPro nerves, that seems really good. Really good. Um, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So that's a good sign that, that they're, you know, their focus is really pushing nerves to 1.0 and, and getting everything polished up. Um, there's also a thing called Nerves Camp coming up here very shortly uh, in New York City at the United Nations. So um, that's pretty exciting because the, um, the open camps, people have said that if, you know, if Nerves Camp works out well, they want to do it every year as like an in-between ElixirConf EU and ElixirConf US kind of nerve specific uh, event. And then, of course, there's also ElixirConf, where there's going to be uh, one of the training session days is um, badge hacking with nerves, uh, which sold out. I forget how many people, like 30, 40 people. Um, so uh, I, got, I got approval to go help teach there, even though my name's not on the list. But uh, my company is very graciously paying me to go um, and also go to the conference. So that's exciting. And then there was also just a whole bunch of talks at ElixirConf EU and the upcoming US about nerves, which is exciting. All right, so how you can help. Um, you can try out one of the guides, report anything confusing or broken, um, you know, fix it yourself if you want to submit a PR or let me know. Um, and I want to say again, especially if you're new to Elixir, if you don't really know how Elixir works, um, see how far you can make it. <laughs> That's my challenge. And then let me know. Um, you can share your nerve-based project, and um, we'd like to feature it on the website. So I'm glad that Tim was able to put together the uh, quiz game tonight. And, show off how awesome nerves can be. See, I mean, like, you could build something like that. That would be amazing. Um, and then if anybody, uh, like, design-ish wants to, like, work on the website, uh, the website for nerves, I didn't, like, put a screenshot. That would have been a good idea. Um, we would like to make it look nicer, not necessarily, like, a big time commitment, really just, like, you know, a basic website that has good typo typography and stuff. Um, I almost signed up to do it myself, but then I remembered every time I do that, I regret it, and I never want to do CSN again in my life, CSS again. So if anybody doesn't feel that way about CSS, uh, let me know. Uh, you could write a guide. So uh, I'm sure Tim learned a lot of things while he was building the, the quiz board, so I expect to see some GPIO guides or something. <laughs> no, you already, you already contributed on the other, the other front, right? You can, Yeah. Yeah, you would think that that would come with the Elixir Ale docs, but um, no. Okay, well, that's my talk. Um, does anybody have questions or, or want me to go into depth on anything in particular? <laughs> yeah, so the Raspberry Pi Zero uh, falls under the Raspberry Pi target. So when you go through the, the Getting Started Guide and let me know about any problems you have, uh, use the RPI, RPI target. And uh, you need a micro SD card for that, I think. Cool. All right, thanks.